Hello and welcome to a video edition of GearCast. I'm Kevin Peckham, your host, and my guest today is uh, Rich Threadgill, who's here from Grass Valley. And our uh, product focus is uh, the Indigo AV Mixer Switcher, I call it. And uh, we're showing it today in a, a little production environment. And uh, Rich, take us through what you've got set up here and explain how this, is, uh, how this is set up. Absolutely, I'd be happy to. The Grass Valley Indigo AV Mixer has been around for a, a little while, and it's really the evolution of the uh, Grass Valley 100 Switcher. Uh, but taking advantage now of scaling, multiple signal formats, and so on. So what we have shown here today uh, is the Indigo HR, which is the second of three models that are available. It has uh, up to 12 standard definition video inputs that could be analog or digital. It also has a pair of high definition inputs that could be HDSDI, or DVI-I, analog or digital So this is really multi-format, but mixed mode in this case. So the, the idea is standard def and high def uh, living alongside each other in the same production. Exactly. Yeah. But the wrinkle here is we also add audio mixing, which is why we kind of call it a mixer more mm -hmm. than a switcher, because I also have eight stereo audio inputs that I can bring into this and mix. Uh, so it's really a production work center at that point then. That's correct, with scaling up and down and advanced features you'd find in a production switcher, like keying, as we're showing here, a chroma key function, uh, transitions, wipes, effects, color correction, all those things that would be in a higher end production switcher. What's the uh, primary application for this? Is it primarily uh, post application or is this for live? This is really a live event product. Uh, most of our customers we find in house of worship, live events, concerts, arena venues where you're doing image magnification and uh, running in a live event situation. Oh, thanks for a good sense. Well, take us through a little of uh, what you've got done here and show us how you're doing. <clears throat> Absolutely. I've got uh, in a limited environment here, I'm bringing a pair of high definition inputs from our T2 IDDR, which we'll talk about in another segment. Uh, but I'm basically bringing in two high definition sources. And I have our, our models here that are actually the source material. They're standing in front of a blue screen. And behind them, I'm running video uh, on another output here from T2. And I'm doing a simple chroma key. It took us about 30 seconds to set it up. It has an auto chroma key function. And a lot of customers that use these products struggle with chroma keys. Sure, so we tried right. to make this real easy. And I can just do simple transitions here. I've got stills and uh, other video sources that I can bring in and apply effects. Real simple operation. What one great feature about it is this large touchscreen display. Makes the setup, configuration, changes, all those different things you'd want to do in a mixer product like this, really easy to execute. Yeah, we're not <coughs> struggling to read a, a little three inch uh, display here. This is really quite elegant. And uh, uh, now is this, a, is this a touch screen? So it's a... This is a, this is a touch screen that allows me to navigate through all my different menu functions, whether I want to make setting uh, adjustments in my audio mixer, or if I want to make changes to my mix effects, my keyers. I can even preview my outputs on this touch screen in a pinch if I need to do so. Wow, that's really an outstanding uh, user interface. Uh, and it has a still store capability I see as well. So what are the limits and capabilities of the still store? So as a still store, I can store up to 24 stills, 12 of them in an SD resolution, 12 of them in a high definition resolution. And I can capture stills from any input. I can also import stills from my USB thumb drive, uh, JPEGs, PNGs, and I can capture them and export them as well. Now, is this the screen that we'd actually call them up? Is this a, a touch it and bring it up, or do you build a list, or how do you, do you stack these up, or how does it work? This would be where I capture them, and then I assign them to button positions on here. So I so can it's assign... an assignment position, okay. That's right. And I can assign any video input to any button position, any still to any button position, and any auto uh, audio input to any fader position. And uh, tell me a little about the EMEM on this. Uh, how extensive uh, are we capturing and setting up the transitions? Absolutely. The EMEM uh, capacity is, is you know, it's really something Grass Valley pioneered back in the day. So decades e ago. Yeah. Decades ago. So EMEM is our, uh, our word for a preset. And I can store up to 160 EMEMs into this mixer, which is great to set up keys, transitions, effects, audio settings, and be able to call them up with just a two number punch. And for, uh, 
for most customers, that allows them to set up events well in advance sure. and then run through a series of EMEM call-ups to simplify their actual live production. And especially when we're calling up stills or, or, or interacting with other devices, now does this have uh, GPI outputs or the ability to reach out and control, in this case, your, your uh, source material here off of another device? Absolutely. One of the nice things we've done is we've built control of not only Grass Valley devices, but other devices as well. So you have a GPIO interface you can use if you want to use for tally in your cameras, for example, or have external control of the switch from a GPI interface. We also have an Ethernet port on here, which will connect to a Grass Valley AMP control network that allow you to control T2 IDDRs, turbos, K2 servers, even some of the older M-series products, all from the touch panel here. So you essentially eliminate the need of a deck okay. operator and can operate right from this interface. And you mentioned House of Worship and other applications where a lot of times the people who are, uh, are operating the equipment aren't doing it as a full-time opportunity. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a once a week kind of a thing. So certainly if you can build those transitions and some of those uh, elements into an EMEM and have them execute the open to something or a transition automatically, it makes it very powerful. Absolutely, and I can save all those settings on a USB thumb drive and simply hand an operator, it could be the volunteer at the church, sure. and say, okay, here's your show to run, insert that, load it up, and it's all built, ready, ready to go. To go. Well, it certainly simplifies it and it adds a lot of power and allows you to do much more sophisticated productions. Now, you mentioned there were, were several levels to the, to the, or different models within the line. Take us through that a little bit so people understand where the stratifications are. I'd be are happy here. to. There's three models to choose from. The base model is called the Indigo SD. It's a standard definition only model, has 12 inputs for video, 8 audio inputs. Um, uh, will output program and preview, and also gives you three standard definition auxiliary outputs. So a lot of I.O. in there. The next step up is the Indigo HR, which adds a pair of high definition or high res inputs, HDSDI mm -hmm. or DVII, and it adds a scaler. So it'll scale up any SD source to high def or high res, and it'll scale down any of the high def or high res sources to a standard definition output. Now is that a simultaneous? Do you get a high def and a standard def at the same time or do you select which you're going to operate in? You can actually operate it in three modes. I can operate it in a 2ME mode where I could do an SD mix and a high def mix simultaneously yeah, and good. have two different mixes or have one follow the other. Mm -hmm. Or I can, in a simpler mode, I can operate in a flat mode and I have the mixer figure out all the scaling for me and I'm just going to output high def or just output just high get res. To where I want to go. Yeah, that's, that's right. Great. And the third model in the line is what we call the Indigo HR8, where we actually add an 8x4 uh, acapella router that will increase your HDSDI inputs okay. to 8. All right, uh, uh, and that's, that's bringing it down to four channels on the on the mixer, or in two? Or brings it, it into two, into so two. it okay. brings the two inputs in. So you have some limited processing. Input expansion, basically, to uh, sub-switch uh, exactly. of, of the unit. And all the inputs on the router get mapped to buttons here, so the user really never touches the router and simplifies the ability to get to more HD inputs. Very transparent to them. Well, we'll flip the unit around here and let people get a look at the, uh, the ins and outs on this. But uh, once again, it's called Indigo. Let's give them those model numbers once again because they're going to be checking on the website to take a look for uh, more detail on these products. You bet. It's the Indigo SD, uh, all standard definition. Indigo HR, which includes standard definition and a pair of high definition inputs. And the Indigo HR8, which is 20 inputs total, 12 in standard def, 8 in high def. Outstanding. Rick, thanks for joining us, and uh, I know the sales much. staff's going to enjoy uh, learning about the product. That's great. Sounds good.